come closer. I'm going to share some tips and tricks that I've used to make dehydrating much easier for my family, and I hope that they will help you. Hi folks, it's Darcy from thepurposefulpantry.com, and maybe they're not secrets because you've probably seen me use them in videos in the past, but I'm putting these together in one tips video to make learning how to dehydrate easier for you, especially if you're brand new and you're just getting into this. So let's get started. The first tip is going to be making a jar airtight. Now airtight storage is all that is needed for dehydrated foods. Yes, you see some people vacuum seal, I do it occasionally. You see some people use oxygen, absorb, oxygen absorbers uh, and that will also work, but they are not necessary. And if you don't have access to those or if you don't happen to have a machine right now that can do the vacuum sealing, it is okay. You do not need it. But what if you have lids like this that you use any kind of commercial jars that you found it goodwill or if you purchase things that you want to recycle but you found the lids that come with it are not airtight uh, peanut butter jars are one of those kind of, of lids you can talk about those um, what happens is that it comes with a plastic lid that has absolutely no barrier to make the air stop coming in and out of the jar which is what makes things airtight is that barrier what you can do is you can purchase little silicone rings that go right on the inside of this that can help stop that but what if you don't want to spend more money what if you just don't have access to that but you have these things that you want to make airtight here's the trick use some plastic wrap what you're going to do is take a piece of plastic wrap put it right over your jar you're going to form that seal across your jar and then you're going to put your lid right back on it just like this what you now have is an airtight jar that is my secret to making things airtight when you have no other option to do so my next tip is for those of you who have dehydrators that the space between shelves is very tight some dehydrators have a good amount of space between them, like the Kasori, so that almost nothing that you've put into the machine is affected by the tray on top of the machine. But one of the things I disliked about my Excalibur, pretty much the only thing that I disliked about it, is that the space between shelves is pretty small. So that when I would put greens in, in order to dehydrate greens to make green powder, I could put a shelf in, and then if I tried to put the next shelf above it, just jammed to the back of the machine, uh, because the, the top tray would push them back. So what I was doing was taking a tray out between each level uh, and losing that amount of drying space at one time. But here's the trick. You take your tray, uh, you put your mesh down, you put your greens on, and then you take another mesh and put it on top of the greens. And when you smush it down and you slide your sheet, your tray into the machine, your greens don't get bunched up in the back. This compacts them and makes easier it easier to get in and out of your machine, which will make a world of difference in the amount of greens that you can do at one time. Now, another trick, you can just simply chop up those greens uh, and that works just fine. It makes them smaller pieces. Then you don't have to worry about the height that it creates when you're kind of putting all of them in at one time. But if you want to keep those whole leaves, this is the trick. Now, here's another tip I have for you. When you're preparing vegetables or mushrooms or, or things like that, instead of spending time slicing them and getting them into uniform slice pieces, if you are in a time crunch, maybe you just don't have the ability to sit and chop and slice. Maybe you can't stand at the counter for that long. Maybe your dexterity is not that great. Uh, maybe you just don't have time because your kids are needing you and you don't have that time. Make the pieces smaller by rough chopping. It's what I do to my ginger, my onions, my garlic, uh, my mushrooms um, like this. What you can see here is that these mushrooms are not full slices or large chunks. Let's see if I can get them out so you can see them better. They are tiny little pieces of mushroom. What helps is that I can just put them through a vegetable chopper, which I use. Uh, it's a full star vegetable chopper that you just put your food in and you chop it and it puts smaller pieces in the bottom. But you can also use a food processor. Just throw that stuff in there, let it run and get really tiny pieces. You can see how I did that in my last video. I'm cleaning out my refrigerator of all the vegetables that we could not eat, which is what happened here. So this is a bunch of tiny little pieces of vegetables that when I dry them and I pull them back out, they are not gonna make these large pieces that you might not like in your food. Uh, it makes integrating dehydrated foods easier for kids who have texture issues, or maybe they don't like to eat big vegetables, but they don't notice this. Um, it's a way to make things go much, much faster when you don't need to spend the time making pretty little slices or cubes because it doesn't matter in the end where that's gonna go. 
I can put these in eggs. I can put these in anything that I cook and it's just easier to get vegetables that they typically wouldn't eat. They're happy to eat it this way because they don't notice, notice those textures and flavors. Now my next tip is for those of you who find that even rehydrated, you still don't like the texture of the way things come out. For me, it's mushrooms. I, oops, sorry. For me, it's mushrooms. I do not like the texture of rehydrated slices or chunks of, of larger chunks of mushrooms that have been rehydrated because they're kind of rubbery to me and I don't enjoy them. I also have a child. Uh, my youngest son is very textural, texturally sensitive to a lot of things. Uh, he's been that way since he was a baby and it makes things easier for me to do this next trick. Uh, those of you who've been around a while know about this because I do it all the time, but if you're new to dehydrating, this might be a way for you to save those things that you've dehydrated and didn't like in order to use them in a new way and not waste your food. So I'm going to take this sample. These are the vegetables that you saw me do in my last video when I cleaned out my entire refrigerator of all the vegetables that we had in there and made and dehydrated them. Now, if I found that for whatever reason I did not like this, instead of throwing this out to go, I just wasted all that time and energy on something I do not even like, what do I do with this instead? You make vegetable powder. You just powder this. You throw that stuff into your into your blender or into a bullet blender and you powder it up like this. The powder makes it easier to integrate into foods and you don't taste it for the most part. Now, you'll have to learn to start small and add more as you go. But what I do with this, uh, I will add up to a tablespoon or two into most meals that I cook. If I'm making pancakes, you bet a little bit of this goes into my pancakes and no one even notices. If I'm making soup, I'll add more of this into it. If I'm making spaghetti, I add a lot more into it. If I'm making any kind of casserole, I do a tablespoon or two into the casserole. If I'm making mac and cheese, you betcha this went into the mac and cheese because as long as I don't add too much, because I can, if I go overboard, my son will go, mom, and I'll say, sorry, I did too much this time, sorry. Uh, but this is the thing that you can add more nutrients into your meals. You can make this a no waste project if you didn't like how it turned out. This is what I do with mushrooms. Now, I have learned to enjoy the mushroom bits like this. They are just fine. But what we do is we make mushroom powder and we use that stuff in everything too because it gives an umami flavor, this kind of richer flavor to things that we find that we use a lot of mushroom powder. But the thing is, is that you don't have to waste. You've got powder that can be added to anything, okay? All right, my next tip is going along with that powder. Now, when you're using a bullet blender um, or even a large blender, maybe even a coffee grinder if you're doing small amounts, you can grind this stuff up, you can make powders, and then you might find that there's a lot of powder left over in the machine that you can't get out and you don't wanna waste it. You just went through a lot of trouble to get that powder and you don't wanna waste it. What you can use is something like a brush. Um, I'm gonna take this as the sample. When you have that leftover powder, you take your brush and then you can just brush it back into your container of choice. Uh, I find that I use a large wide fan art brush most. This is just the one I had handy, uh, but I use this one on small crevices too. You can use a pastry brush. You can use a paint brush that's never been used on anything, you know, other than your food because you don't want to mix those kind of things. But any kind of brush mechanism will help you clean that stuff off and make it really easy to save even that much more. That's totally up to you, but I know a lot of people get frustrated by that and this is the way to fix it. Get a brush that's dedicated to your powders. Now another tip I have is for those of you who would like to do some kind of liquid, maybe it's spaghetti sauce or salsa or picante sauce or maybe you're doing a broth that you would like to make into a bouillon and you're concerned about pouring those liquids onto your dehydrator trays, uh, fruit leather sheets, and you're worried that it's going to go off the side and make a huge mess in your machine. Now, the first thing I would say is simmer them over the stove to let some of the moisture escape and make them a little thicker. That way you can pour it under those sheets and you don't have to really worry about it going off the edges as long as you don't like push it to the edges when you're trying to lay that out. Uh, but but that still is a concern for people that maybe there's going to be, a, uh, it's just going to go over the edges, it gets hot, it's going to spread out. It's going to make a mess. And that's a valid concern. So a way that you can fix this, and this especially works for those of you with rectangular or square machines that do not have a hole in the middle. Um, there are trays that you can purchase from most machines that either come from the manufacturer or that you can get from a company called Bright Kitchen that is the silicone sheet that has a lip on it. But you don't necessarily want to buy these. Let me show you.
show you a trick. What you're going to do is you're going to take your piece of parchment that you already have or your fruit leather sheet. Okay, you can do it either way. And what you're going to do is just take the corner and you're going to create a little pocket on this corner. And then you're going to take a paper clip. Ah, come on. Of course, I'm trying to do it for the camera. And so what you've done is created this little pocket. And you do that to every corner. Okay, just like this. And by the time you do, you're done, you've effectively created a fruit leather sheath that has lipped edges, okay? So that you can lay this on your tray. Trust me, it does. <laughs> lay this on your tray, and when it sits flat, it does have these lipped edges that you will not spill. And it's also not permanent, so you haven't ruined this sheet to use for any other reason. Uh, you can use paper clips, you can use bulldog clips, you can use um, any kind of thing that clamps on here to hold this corner in place. I've even used staples before, especially if I was using parchment paper, and that way it would stay and I didn't really care because that was not going to get used again anyway. But this is a way to make a temporary tray to put into your machine that you can dehydrate. Now follow me closely with this one. This next tip is really helpful. But your future self will thank your past self if you listen to this tip and follow it. Take notes, okay? When you're starting dehydrating and you haven't done things before, take notes. Whether you purchase a dehydrating journal from me, which gives you lots and lots of places to take lots of notes on any project that you do, maybe something you wanna change the next time you do it, maybe you wanna try a different seasoning blend, maybe you wanna drop the temperature, maybe you want to prepare it a different way, you can take those notes. You can have a spiral or a notebook that you take notes in. Maybe you're just doing it on post, you know, on kind of index cards that you put into a book. Uh, maybe you do like I did before, you take copious notes in books that you've rebought, you put uh, information in the margins, you write in them, you mark out things that you didn't like doing. Take note on the projects that you do now, whether you're canning, fermenting, uh, dehydrating, whatever. The reason this is helpful is because next time you do a project may not be for a year or two, and you might have forgotten how something turned out the year before that you don't remember that you didn't like, or that maybe you wanted to try to create a new seasoning blend out of a, one that you've done before, and you take some notes about how you might change it. Maybe you found that when you're doing celery, everybody tells you to blanch it. But maybe next time you want to try not blanching it if it saves you some time. Test it. You know, if you test it, maybe you tried it by not blanching and you really didn't like it. So you put a note in there, do not skip the blanching step because that helps you remember the next time that you do it, that this is how you preferred it. Maybe you wanna make some kind of apple fruit leather and you wanna change up flavors, so you put notes in about things you might wanna do next time, like maybe you wanna put some blueberries in it. Maybe you wanna add some cinnamon to your fruit leather. Maybe you wanna do something like I found one of my uh, followers have done is apples and black pepper, she likes that. Maybe you wanna do something completely different and you wanna take notes so that you remember it the next time so that it makes your dehydrating journey more useful, educational, uh, and helpful down the road so you don't don't forget those things that maybe didn't work for you this time that you want to try differently the next. So for my next tip is a way to store your canning rings for your jars. Now you should store your dehydrated foods with a ring on that helps keep it airtight. But with your canning things, you don't keep the ring on, but maybe you just have extras that you have waiting that you're ready to start putting foods in jars and you just haven't need a space for these to be until that time. This is a pants hanger that I got from, a, I found it online one day from a friend who, who picked one up and said, this is ingenious. Now we're, it is ingenious. I'm going to do it to you. So thanks, Becky. Um, this is a way to store all of my canning rings. Now what happens is you have these little rods that pop off and I put the wide mouth on two of these together. And then I do the regular mouth, one on each rod, and they just pull off. You can take off what you need. You can just put this back. And this stores at the end of my shelf where I keep my extra dehydrators, my canning equipment, and some of my other equipment. It's just a metal shelf that this just hangs on the end of it. Uh, but you can also use bungee cords. If you have one that you can just string across a shelf, you can just put a bungee cord up and do the same kind of thing. But I found it's way more helpful to do this than for me to try to dig them out of a box and try to find out where they are. So I hope these tips have helped you. What I would love is if you would put one tip that you have for somebody who's starting out new to dehydrating, put it down in the comments below so that they can learn from it too. If you want to purchase my book, you can get it right here. And if you want to see how I cleaned out my entire refrigerator full of vegetables, you can watch this video right here. Until I see you again next time, happy dehydrating.